I was thinking we wait for some others and but I don't uh, if no one is coming, then I think I should start because it's already 3 p.m. Yeah, we'll probably when we get to us. So, you'll pick one at some point. Yes, yes. So, as you... Uh, so, my name is Aniket Zoshi. And I came to study here in fall 2020, 22, Sorry, 2022. My mistake. So... This is my second year here and I am very thankful to Panit for arranging my talk. Uh, let me just start with how this uh, talk came to be. So last fall I had taken a course, a topic, a topic course named Geometric Group Theory taught by Dr. Krychevsky. Panit and uh, Zachary were at that course. So, as a part of the evaluation, we had to give a presentation which was 50% of our total credits. So, the topic I chose was, uh, Cox, uh, was on coxator groups. And this is the same topic uh, I will be talking on today. So, Panit himself was not present during my presentation, but uh, in late December, he ca uh, came to me asking whether I could uh, repeat this presentation in the, uh, in the graduate seminar of this spring, this, this semester. So, this is how I am here speaking about coxator groups. So, I won't repeat that uh, that presentation exactly. There will be a, a little difference. But overall, the theme will be an introduction to various concepts in the theory of coxator groups. That is, the coxator groups themselves. How did they come to be? and a few tools used in trying to classify the coxator groups and lastly i will mention but uh, not uh, elaborate on a few applications of coxator groups and a couple of open problems in the theory of coxator groups so shall we start three minutes so So, is this visible in the recording? Yes. Okay. So, coxator groups were introduced in 1934 by Harold Scott Macdonald Coxeter, a British and ca Canadian mathematician. So, they were introduced as an abstraction of reflection groups. So, uh, I will come to this later. So, before we give the de definition of coxator groups, let us just uh, revise what the presentation of a group is. So, the presentation of a group is a formal way to describe the group in terms of generators and relations. So, let G be our group, then we have x1, x2, up to xn. So, here I am writing the presentation for a finitely generated group. There are also infinitely generated groups, anyway, xn. And these are the generators and W1, W2 up to Wm, these are the relations. 
so what are w1 uh, w, uh, what are these w i so they are known as words by words i mean finite products of uh, certain symbols ai where ai belongs to x1 x2 xm and so the generators and their inverses so we pick up elements from this set and then we write in this sort just uh, by multi by multiplication oh, oh shoot. my mistake i should have written a product here so by product we just we mean that we are just placing these one beside the other just as we place letters in a word so let me just erase this part now that we know what a presentation of a group is we define a coxeter group so let g be a group generated by n generators x1 up to xn then g is obtained from these generators by equating the following to 1 the identity element so x1 square xn square so so this means every element every generator of the cox of g has order 2 and x i x j m i j now uh, and so this is a pairwise product of two two generators raised to some integer now in this case uh, we are assuming i is not equal to j because if i equals j we that part we have enumerated here already now a few th uh, i would like to explain a few things about uh, this order m i j so m i j is not equal to 1 if i and j are not equal because if it is equal then x i xj will be 1 so xi so xj will be the inverse of xi that is the uh, which is to say equal to xi yes right also only if uh, i and j are not the same m i j may be infinity for some i in j so if mij is infin infinity then no power of xi xj is a, uh, is equal to 1 so it doesn't uh it is not written in this in the set of relations now there is one more property about mij that is mij is equal to mji
so how is this possible uh, we see that uh, x i x j raised to m i j is 1 now let us calculate x j x i raised to m no m i j so this is x j x i x j x i dot 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 x j x i right then we multiply this by x j square which is 1 and then j x i x j x i x j and then x j now the pair x i x j comes m i j times here m i j times so this is equal to 1 as we see then x j square which is 1. So, we see that uh, m j i divides m i j. Now, if still they are not equal, then uh, we apply the similar uh, apply the same method to x i x j and we can calculate that x i x j is 2 m j i is 1 so does uh, MJI and MIJ have to be equal? Okay, so now we spoke about what MIJ is. Now we come to an important question. How does this de definition of coxator groups, this one, relate to reflections or the reflection group? If you see the generators of a coxator group have order 2, also if we uh, uh, in a you uh, in a space if we apply a reflection twice that is the identity function so under function composition the reflection will have an order to also take uh, two reflections Uh, I, I am explaining this for finite groups, finite coxeter groups. Then the angle between them will be pi upon, uh, has to be pi upon some integer. Then let, uh, we name this xi. 
and we name this xj then the then xi xj will be a rotation by an angle 2 pi upon k right so the order quote unquote so x i x j raised to k is oh sorry is the identity now i must uh, mention that not every coxeter group can be expressed in terms of this so we are uh, dealing with a set big, uh, a collection of groups which is bigger than the reflection groups uh, we will come across uh, one such infinite coxeter group in one of our examples Uh, uh, wait, could you repeat? Oh, yeah, yeah. So, so, like, what is the general reflection look like? That's not indeed reflection. General reflection group? Yeah, okay, you said that you're going to consider uh, a group of reflections that's bigger. No, no, no. A collection of coxator groups okay. which is bigger than the collection of reflection groups. For a for a reflection group, generally. Maybe go on. We'll okay. Yes, there has to be. So a few exam. Uh, so may I erase this part? So now we see a few examples of coxeter groups. The most trivial is Z2. Just one generator with uh, which has order 2. Another example which is the I can say the most trivial among uh, infinite coxeter groups is is this x and y are two generators both have order 2 and that's it xy or yx has order infinity so This becomes uh, x, x square. We can separate this into this and this. Now, this star that you see in between uh, these two groups is known as the free product. So, in a free product, we get, uh, get uh, the letters are elements from these groups while the uh, while the words are uh, like yes formed from these letters they can be any of any length they can be anything so no word 
is specifically equated to 1 unless it can be reduced to 1. Okay. So, another example is d to n. So, take for example, Uh, this uh, regular polygon. Now, D to with even number of edges. Now D uh, now D to n is the group of symmetries of this polygon. Now, as an example, I have drawn an drawn a hexagon. So. Our, uh, our first generator is a reflection along this line, the x-axis. We denote it by R. Now, commonly, the other generator for D2N is given as this. It is a rotation counterclockwise by an angle of 2 pi upon n. n is the number of sides of this polygon. But this does not have an order 2. So we take another element. So, the R of S. So, we first rotate by S and then reflect at uh, this line, uh, uh, across this line. So, let us see what is this, rip, uh, what does, what do we get from this, this composition. So, take this point, ref, uh, rotate and reflect. Then, this point is mapped to this point. Next, take this one, rotate and reflect. So, this point is mapped to this and then rotate and reflect which will fix the fix so this maps to this so if we take the other points they will map to th like this from this to this and from this to this so what we get is a reflection across this line now, the angle, bit, uh, let me use the bla uh, black ink, huh. this, this is better. Now, the angle between these two lines is pi upon n. And... Uh, If we uh, and let's see now what happens when we apply the two reflections pairwise. So we call reflection across this line as R S, which we have written here. Now R square is identity. R S the whole square is identity. Is that, is that? Uh, n is the number of sides of that regular that regular polygon whose symmetry group is uh, this d to n. Now R S R will be 
as we know s inverse which is rotating clockwise by an angle of 2 pi upon n it has order n and uh, no not this and the same goes with r dot r s but uh, this will be a i think this will be a redundancy so i won't write this one and there we have the three relations okay just taking the time there is one further exa example sn now the until now we saw groups generated by two elements now we are seeing a group generated by more than two elements so 1 2 dot 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 n minus 1 and n so 1 2 2 3 3 4 and so on up to n minus 1 n these are the uh, permutations which swap adjacent elements or consecutive elements to be more precise so these are the generators of sn now the order of these generators is 2 because they just swap two elements and that's it now we see how uh, what are the pair wise products of these elements so i i plus 1 i plus 1 i plus 2 these two are the con are consecutive so if we take the product we get i goes to i goes to i plus 1 i i plus 1 i plus 2 so this is a three cycle of order 3 so i i plus 1 I plus one, I plus two, three. Now, if uh, let's take j j plus one, such that j is not equal to i plus one, then. these two don't uh, affect each other so they are swapping two different pairs of elements so the order of this product will be 2 and this is the representation of sn as a coxeter group assuming sn doesn't have a real reflection reflection trivial like can you can you represent sn as a reflection uh i don't think i can right now okay no no i mean like is it is it is it is it possible because you you're going to give examples that are in like Uh, like uh, this is one example. Okay. Also, SN is a little like I have a little difficulty in visualizing SN as it. Hmm. It was obvious that the general group here, Okay. So, can I uh, erase this part?
okay now uh, the next we are uh, topic uh, topic i will be speaking about is uh, the coxeter diag matrix the shefley matrix and the coxeter diagram so as we will see soon these sorry okay so as we'll uh, as we will see soon these uh, uh, thing, uh, objects are uh, have a use in classification of coxeter groups so the first thing we see object we see is the coxeter matrix so i will uh, because i raised the, the definition of the group i will write it this time and keep it so let g be a coxeter group generated by x1 dot 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 xn n elements and uh, this is the So this is the the presentation of the co our coxeter group. Now we define the coxeter matrix M as M i j equals order of x i x j n cross n matrix. So this is a symmetric matrix as we all know as we just uh, saw a few minutes ago also what are the diagonal element uh, entries of capital m so m i i is order of x i x i this is x i square so this has to be 1 right so as we saw in the definition of coxeter groups capital m also admits uh, infinity as one of its entries this is why we cannot do a lot of work on the coxeter matrix itself however we have one ma matrix which is uh, more useful because all of its entries are finite. So we come to the Shafley matrix. Shafley matrix. So with uh, this being the definition of C, C is defined as C i j equals to minus two cos pi divided by m i j where uh, m i j are these entries from the coxeter matrix now why are all entries of c finite now as we see no entry of uh, m is zero so zero will not come here and there will be no cos of pi over infinity and so on now what do we see if mij is infinity if i j is infinity then c i j is equal to minus 2 
cos pi over infinity and now this can be taken as 0. Sorry, I missed it. So what, why do we care for sharp matrices? Okay, uh, I will repeat. So we care about Schaefer mat matrices because of this. So, okay. the, Schaeff the Schaeffle matrix does not uh, admit infinity as one of its entries, right. so whereas Coxeter matrix does. So, we can get around writing infinity in entries for our matrices. That's the only reason? Yes, as far as I know. Okay. So, this is 0, so cos of 0 is 1, so Cij will be minus 2. So, thus we see that uh, all entries of the Schaeffle matrix are defined and finite. Now, I mentioned uh, the classification of Coxeter groups uh, so just a little time ago. Yes. Yes. Why is the minus two other sometimes? Yeah. What do we have minus two? Just put anything over. I mean, if I could, I could just replace all these one in my J matrix, right? I could, uh, if I'm giving a shop from the matrix, can I go back? Can I, when can I go back to my original my J matrix? Can I go? By, okay, by obtaining Mij from Cij, basically doing the reverse. Yeah, but cosine is too much periodic, right? So yes, but Yes. Okay. Right. So, uh, it's stuck in the same same quadrant. Mm -hmm. Quadrant. Okay. Not always, right? Because imagine can be one for some entry. So. Okay. Right. So. M I J. I mean, we can get a unique value of M I J. From C I J. Uh, any difficulties or okay 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 so how do we uh, so uh, just some time ago 39 I mentioned the classification of Coxeter groups so what has the Schaeffle matrix to uh, to do with that classification we check the eigenvalues of capital C. Uh, let me just uh, erase this one. Mm. Sorry. So, we check So if all eigenvalues are positive, then then G is a finite Coxeter group. Now If all eigenvalues are non-negative, 
एंड एट लीस्ट वन आई गेन वैल्यू इज जीरो देन जी इज सेट टू बी अ फाइन नाउ आई विल स्टेट वॉट एन अफाइन ग्रुप इज a fine coxeter group yes hermitian matrix yes it's a uh, the shekley matrix is hermitian right or oh, for obviously right because all entries are real and it is symmetric so okay so a fine coxeter group g is said to be an affine coxeter group if g itself is infinite but there exists abelian sub group h normal in g such that g mod h is a finite coxeter group so this is what an affine coxeter group is and if the eigen values do not satisfy either of either criterion we cannot uh, determine what type of group g is so uh yeah i actually did not find the okay. name of it okay. do you have a question about the idea of this or uh no actually not i just uh, like as far as this lecture goes sorry this talk goes I just wanted to state this and then move on.